Today's hot sauce recipe is one that is inspired by a recent trip I took out to Mozambique and it uses one of my all-time favorite chilies. At the resort we are staying at in Mozambique, the meals were all prepared by this lovely lady named Jessica and she made lovely food Every meal was just amazing. But the one thing that really stood out for me was on the table for every meal was the small bowl of peri peri sauce. And I could tell it was homemade and I just had to get the recipe from her. Thankfully, by the end of the holiday, she actually shared it with me. And today's sauce is going to be a sauce that is inspired by the recipe that she showed me. I will be sharing the actual recipe with you in a recipe book that I'm putting together. It should be ready for you before the end of the year, hoping within the next month or two. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I did quite a bit of work on that out in Mozambique and uh, I think you guys will really like it. But enough of that, let's get down to making this delicious peri peri sauce. Let's look at the ingredients that we're going to be using with the sauce. First up, we have the oil and the vinegar. The oil is just vegetable oil. Uh, this one is sunflower oil. Um, you can use others if you want. I wouldn't use something like olive oil or anything with too much flavor because it'll detract from the taste that you're gonna get here. Over here we have vinegar. I have a mix of 400 milliliters of brown vinegar. Uh, it's just a malt vinegar. And then there's 600 milliliters of distilled white vinegar. Over here are our peri-peri, freshly picked from the greenhouse. We have just under 300 grams of peri-peri. Over here I have seven very, very hot chocolate jigsaws. We have seven of those, it's around 40 grams. Then up here we have a cup of minced garlic. We have a bunch of thyme. We have two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of black peppercorns. And that's it. So let's start putting this together and getting this cooked up. I'm not putting all the garlic in all at once because the flavor of garlic actually cooks out quite easily. So I'm gonna put about half in when we cook it up and we'll put the other half in a little bit towards the end so that uh, we keep quite a lot of that strong garlic flavor. The smells here are just incredible. I wish you could smell this. It's just stunning. So I'm just gonna get this to a simmer and then we start adding the rest of the oil and the vinegar and we're gonna blend it a little bit more while it's in the pot. Once you've had this simmering for about 10 minutes, it's ready then for the final steps. We're gonna take the rest of the garlic, which I've just put in the bottom of this blender jug. We're gonna put a, a little bit of the sauce into the blender jug with the garlic. We're gonna blend it up just so that we make sure that there's no big chunks of garlic inside here. And then we're gonna cook this for another five minutes and we'll be ready then to bottle. This is smelling so good. I'm gonna let that cool for a little while because you don't want to blend anything <laughs> at that sort of temperature without, uh, without letting it cool down because you'll have an explosion when you open up this bottle. Because of the nature of the sauce, I am gonna be adding some xanthan gum 
All this is is something that will help emulsify this. There's obviously a lot of oil in here and the vinegar and what will happen is it will just separate. So the xanthan gum, the, the small amount I'm going to add will hopefully keep that together for longer so you won't have that separation. With the amount of sauce that I have here I'm going to use about an eighth of a teaspoon at first and we'll see how that works and I might add another eighth so that'll be a quarter of a teaspoon. You really do not need a lot of this stuff. The next thing we need to do is test the pH. Now you want to let this cool a little bit before you get there. I'm going to test it at the end but I'm pretty confident this will be around about 3.5 on the pH meter and uh, that's perfectly great for what I'm trying to do here. That'll make it a shelf stable source, uh, combining that with how I'm going to bottle it. So let me, uh, let me get this back up to a simmer and we'll do the bottling next. So it's time to bottle. Just to bear in mind, these are all sterilized, these bottles. The uh, sauce itself is boiling and that'll make sense in a little while. I'll explain what I'm going to be doing. The caps as well, I have sanitized and sterilized those. So those are ready to go and all the other equipment I'm using as well have been sterilized. For my bottling, I'm using 150 ml bottles and I found this cool thing on Amazon. I will link to it down below. It helps with the bottling. If you've ever done this before, you'll know what happens when you uh, fill up these bottles with a funnel. You end up uh, getting sauce bubbling up underneath there. This thing has some ridges to help that not to happen and uh, it works pretty well. So we need to bottle while the sauce is still boiling and uh, you'll see why in just a second. We move on to the next bottle and while we're doing that I'm just gonna get it started. We need to cap the one we've just done. With the boiling liquid that's inside there. So we're gonna cap that, seal it nice and tight and it goes upside down. So you can see there upside down and what that does is it sterilizes the cap as well. So it's just a it's just a really good process make sure that everything is nicely sterilized sanitized and you've got yourself a very healthy source that has a decent shelf life so there we go we have bottled up all our sauce it is looking good i need to uh, let this cool down it's all just sitting upside down for the moment so we'll let that all cool down for now the last thing i need to do is test out this with the pH meter and make sure that I've got my calculations right and we'll do that in just a second but these are all bottled up I need to get the labels on as well and also the shrink wrap on the lids but we'll do that in a little while but for now let's test out the pH of our source. I calibrated my meter this morning so I know that it's all good and uh, it's ready to go. So this here has cooled down you need to let this source cool down uh, below about 40 degrees Celsius as your readings are going to be a bit off with the with the pH meter Let's just switch that on And let's see what we have <laughs> My calculations were almost perfect 3.4 3.5 so I'm very happy with that. That source is safe. We've bottled it correctly and you'll have a decent shelf life. And uh, once it's open, then put it in the fridge and uh, use it within the next three weeks or so. It's time to taste the sauce. And if it tastes anything like it smells, it's gonna be incredible. So let's just have a look at it first. It looks lovely and thick. Love that texture. That's just perfect for what I'm looking for. And let's just Take a little bit there and give it a bit of a taste. Mm. There's a little bit of a sweetness that is up front. <clears throat> uh, instant heat from the peri peri. Not not. It's not overwhelming. Um, this is a this is a good sauce to oh, put on some chicken. I think of course peri peri. It's just fantastic on chicken. Um, eggs I think will be good as well uh, the heat is building now a little bit that's the jigsaw I think and uh, mm. 
that's good. That's really good. So like I say, this isn't going to blow your face off. It's not that type of sauce. It's not meant to be a super hot sauce, but very flavorful and uh, very, very tasty. Bottled, labeled, and the first chili chum sauce that is ready for sale. As a thank you to all my patrons that have been supporting me on patreon.com, this sauce is going to be for sale exclusively to you, at least for the first five days. If these don't sell out within the first five days, then I will make them public. And if you've signed up on the newsletter on my website, which I'll link up above, then you will get alerted that it will be available for general sale. I'm trying to ship to as many places as I can, um, working on trying to include more and more. So if, you're, if your country is not covered just yet, then you know, hopefully it's going to be in the future. Let me know if you, uh, if you are wanting to buy some of my sources in the future. Tell me where you're from and I'll see if I can try and include it in the shipping. But I'm pretty excited about this. I, <laughs> I love the label and I want to thank my wife. She uh, helped me design this and uh, just it looks amazing. Thank you. That's it for this video. There are plenty more spicy recipe videos coming up over the next few months. And not just sauce recipes. I have got a bunch of sauces that are fermenting away in the Ferminator. And uh, those are going to be amazing. But there's a bunch of other spicy recipe videos that I've put together as well that I'm sure you guys are going to love. So make sure you are subscribed if you haven't yet. And click that bell icon as well. It makes sure you get alerted when I do release a video. But until the next one, thank you so much for watching and stay spicy.